Welcome to PvP Plays Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Episode 2. I'm Demisi, and we've just entered the Marble Gallery. So, we're gonna rock our way through this. We did some sound balancing in the last between episodes here. So, uh, hopefully it won't be quite so loud. Actually be able to hear me, me and my suave felt voice. <laughs> Alright, so... The joke here is now is once you jump down here, you can't get back. So make sure that you got everything out of the alchemy laboratory so you're not, uh, less screwed. Ah, the tables! The tables have turned! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna head down this way because there's some items over here that, while not necessary for completion, you'd want to skip them if you were speed running or something. I like having them because uh, they give you some nice information. I believe it's the uh, spirit orb allows you to see how much damage you're dealing so you can track what items and weapons are actually dealing effects since enemies do have resistances in some cases. It allows you to see if you're actually being effective or not. Plus you can stack up on hearts and XP while you're at it. Ah! Curse you evil dolls. Who do you think this is? Devil May Cry? Come on now. Yeah! Give me that sweet XP. Alright. Spirit Orb. Now I can see enemy damage. Well, damage on enemies. I mean... Uh, I'm just gonna head back up. I'm not gonna fluff around with uh, taking the long route down. Ooh, a smart potion. Boost my intel. Ow! Curse you skeletons! Bloop. Bloop. Sounds like I got a haunting. All right, chopping my way through these skillet bros. All right. Ah, evil table. Hit the save point, get my HP back. Since I did level up and I got my butt kicked a little bit. All right, and now we'll head up. So, in general, the goal is to try to get to the throne room and kill Dracula. That is Alucard's final goal here. Ooh. Fleeman! And the clock tower. Ooh. Wait a moment. You seem human, and yet, what do you hear? I've come to destroy this castle. Then we have the same purpose. I'll trust you for now. I'm Maria. Who are you? Alucard. Me. Not the talkative type I can see. Well, perhaps we'll meet again. If you live that long. Farewell. So, this clock is based off of real time in game. And every so many minutes, these statues move. And as you can see, I can't quite make it up there yet. <laughs> uh, there is some sort of trick involving, like, the kick from the bare-fisted off the candle that'll get you up there, but I have no idea how it's done. So, um, we'll just, uh, play this the proper way. Um, just because I don't know how they do it. Oop, give me my knife back. Check out. So, uh, Maria down there sounds like a prostitute whose lines were recorded in the bathroom because they almost were. Um, they originally had no intention of adding voice acting to this game, but it was decided like literally last minute that they were going to do it. So they just grabbed two voice, they just grabbed a handful of voice actors off the streets. <laughs> 
not quite. I mean, St. John, who does the voice of uh, uh, Alucard here, is actually a pretty renowned voice actor and does the voice of Ansem in Kingdom Hearts. Fun fact for you there. Um, but uh, they they recorded on like last second with like no sound control quality control, so that's why everybody's voice acting is really stilted and echoey. Ugh. Ow! Knock it off! But uh, yeah, so. That's just one of those things of uh, game production, why the lines sound so terrible. Because they weren't meant to be spoken. Where are you going? Die. So here's an interesting question. Is the creature the monster or the lady on the tail? Nobody knows. Jump, 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 jump. Pelvic thrust in the general direction of this money. Oh, another throwback to Old Castlevania. You can see the big old eye floating out there. Um, in other Castlevanias, there's an enemy called the Peeping Eye. Ah, damn it. There's an enemy called the Peeping Eye, which uh, uh, floats in through the windows in almost every game. But in this game, the windows are locked, so he's stuck outside. Also, so, yeah, there's uh, the status effect stone. I'm not sure why these roses scream like they do, but it is what it is. Wow. I'm doing terrible. Oh! If you get hit by, if you get stoned, walls for 20, please it. If you get stoned, you gotta rock yourself free, fighting game style. Like, they took a lot from fighting games. Hey, look, I can see your boobies. Moving on. Bang. Outer wall. Zircon. All right, so here's a neat little Easter egg, is if you go down this way. No, uh, not that guy, that guy's gonna wreck me. As you can see, I do basically no damage to him. Let's see if I can soul steal him. No, wrong button. Well, now I don't have enough magic. Fireballs. What is it? It's up, down, or it's left, right, up, down. There we go. Go get him. Up, down, left, right, or left, right, up, down, and an attack at the end of it. And you summon a spirit. Woo! Do I have 50 MP? I do have 50 MP. Alright, so I can wait till that recharges and it's soul stealing for a billion damage. Heal me! Machine gun the knives! Whoop! Ow! Right off! This has gone terribly wrong. Ow. Get him! No! Not her! Him! There. What did he drop? 25 gold. Totally worth it. Pot roast! The nice thing about that guy is he literally doesn't respawn. He's only over there one time. Because he's a much higher level enemy who's in a place he really shouldn't be. Which is why I don't do any damage to him. He's a challenge buffer like, hey, can you get past this guy? Mini boss, so to speak. So if you head down here, you got this cool, like, loft. You got, like, little things going on. You got the bird coming back here to feed its babies. And you got this telescope. Bloop, bloop. We'll look out here. And you can see Charon the fairy man. Moving his uh, raft. Oh, look, I saw a fish. All right, so we're gonna move over this way. Oh, yes, there's also chairs all over the game that you can sit in and just take a break. So, while uh, Alucard's hanging out, I'm gonna have me some delicious coffee my wife made. All right, break time's over. Back to work. I need to be 
be faster at that if I'm gonna <laughs> use the knife, apparently. Yep, and it ran out, figures. No, heal me! Oh. It's very precise, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, so it's actually tough to land it, which makes it a very impractical healing spell, but it is the only healing spell in the game. Uh, and that you rely on potions, items, and uh, pickups. Axe armor, yes. Yeah. So these guys got a shield, so they're immune. They take much reduced damage from projectiles. But you can break their shield. And now, he, oh, now he still takes less damage from projectiles. You could have sworn they took less, but you could see like the knife hit him and ricocheted off. There's another chair. Ah, uh, time to get some work done. With me and my hanging friend here. Overwrite data. Yes, we shall save the game here. Alright. I always wanted this bell to do something if you hit it, but it doesn't. Which makes me sad. The doors are opening. All of them. Jesus, it's like a Looney Tunes. What? Ow. I'm kicking my own ass. Better than me? What the hell is this? Shank, 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 shank. Give me that sweet healing. Ow. Ow. You only closed one door, Alucard. What about the other nine? Huh! Action pose. All right, and now we got a new sword. Slightly longer than my previous one and does significantly more damage. Don't think I can make that jump just yet. Because the roof there, I think, knocks you down if you try. Uh, you might be able to, like, frame pixel perfect it or something, but... So what we're going to do... Ooh, a banana off a skeleton ape. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go up. So you can see by the time period, like, guns are a thing. So, can't get in that door just yet. This guy is another one of those, like, mini-boss guardian-type dudes who's, like, in the way of things. So, let's see, it's... Nope, wrong one. And now I'm out of MP. Damn. Guess I gotta fight him the old-fashioned one. Oh, the gold ones turn you to stone. Because of course I got hit by it. So, by turning this on, the elevator is now activated, and the door with that glowing golden orb that I ran right past is now open. I think I need to go down and get that, because there's another jump on a tight ceiling. And by getting the wolf form, you can jump longer, but not as high. This elevator looks super safe, too. 
The complaints about the previous elevator have been rectified by management. <laughs> We've heard your complaints, and we have rectified the problem with extreme prejudice. Doggo powers, activate! Like, you can jump pretty high as doggo form, but... Like, you gotta jump off of ramps, which is weird. Oop. I'm gonna turn back until I get up there. It makes navigating hard, because it's a little floatier than Alucard is. Because the momentum gain is different. Oh. Oh. Oof. You can see, like, it picks up speed at kind of a ridiculous rate. I believe this is a teleporter? Yes. So remember this. If you look up here, Scorpion. That's which teleporter this is. Scorpion is outer wall. Each one of the teleporters has a different animal associated with it, so we'll come back and deal with that. I'm gonna go down and finish cleaning up some of the things that I left behind down here. Whoa! Doggo! Ruff. Life max. No! Oh. I got the one that I said I couldn't make, didn't I? Yeah, the life max. All right. So now we need to go to the library. Later on, you get a power for the wolf form that makes you invincible once you hit top speed and you start dealing damage. You can use that for quick travel to like dash through long hallways and stuff. Like, once you're high enough level, it starts, like, insta-killing things, which is pretty slick. Most of the Castlevania games from this one forward have an ability kind of like that, that gives you, like, a frontal shield as you dash. Either in a combination of item and uh, magic, or just magic, or just item, but they usually find a way to give it to you. I think this is a library? should be. Yeah, there we go. The long library. Alright, so the thing is, is we found a door that says that it's magically sealed and we can't open it. And that is blocking our progress. So, what we're going to do is... You explore a little bit, and the first thing that you find out when you explore is you find the old man at the end of Like, you run out of places to go. The library is the only one left. And by the time you get to the end of the library, you find um, the old man who um, sells you an, who has an item for sale called a blue gem, which says that it opens magically sealed blue doors. So, you gotta come up here and talk to him and buy that. And that's, you know, their mandatory tutorial on teaching you that the shop is a thing and you should pay attention to it. Um, it's literally the only time that this old guy is relevant. And, uh... <laughs> uh there's also a couple Easter eggs involving the old guy on the moon boots, which I might show off later just for kicks and giggles. Jeez. One dollar. Do, 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 do. Uh, these Dullahans actually drop your first magical weapon that you can actually obtain, which is funny because it's literally just a basic rapier, but you get like a multi-slash attack, which is really powerful and has a high crit chance. So if uh, you're in the mood to uh, do some farming, like, they're a good thing to do so. It doesn't have a, a stellar drop rate, unfortunately, which is why I uh, probably won't see one. 
We're just going to use what we come across. I'm not going to take the time to farm anything in this playthrough. Because, well, the game really doesn't require it. Also, just for the point of it, check out the cool backgrounds. Parallax scaling. Scrolling, not scaling. Ah! Knew it! Knowledge is painful. Um, those creepy green and red blobs that I fought on the way up here are the, uh, first and one of the few enemies in the game that actually do curse you. I came up here because I wanted the fairy scroll. So I could, it now tells me the name of the enemy. So these are magic tomes. I think these are called like Book of Arms in every game after this one because they're full of weapons. Like it's a magic book detailing weaponry. And so because it's a magic book, the weaponry just like comes out of it, which is kind of hilarious. Spellbook. I don't know what those do. Like I think they just float around and be annoying. So the old man should be right here. Oh, Alucard! It's been a long time, old one. Oh, it's you, Master Alucard. What do you need? I need your help. Young Master. Young Master. Oh, I such shame! Who's the master? You won't go unrewarded. Hey, you. Oh! I like how he like, perks up and like snaps to you. He's like, oh, really? I'm interested in this. So, um, these gems, the only thing you can do with them is sell them to this guy for cash. Which is good. So, right here, Duel of Open. The only item that is required from this guy. Um, this is a really badass sword, so if you end up with the ability to get one, get one. Um, same with the Iron Shield, although I think this one, you do find this one later. Um, and the diamond plate is one of the best standard armors. Um, Joseph's cloak is really awesome because, uh, you can set your own color scheme, which is pretty awesome. And that's a good trinket, the map. This will fill in, so, uh, that's something I haven't actually shown off yet is the map. So, um, up until I just bought that map, all the grade stuff that you see wouldn't show like it would all be blank so now that i bought the map it's filled in a basic outline of the castle but as you can see um most of it is not actually showing so um this is a pretty decent stopping point for now so um we'll uh see you next time so thank you for joining us on pvp play symphony of the night uh, I'm Demisi. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Catch you later.